Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to another section of Video Notes on 11.1, .1, but this time we're going to talk about simplifying radicals with rationalization. So rationalization then is what if you watch the example videos for the last video on 11.1 .1 where we were dealing with division in radicals, we had a radical in the denominator. And we said that's not okay. We need a way to take care of that. And that's what rationalization gives us. So rationalization then is if we have a radical or a radicand in the bottom that doesn't have any perfect square terms, meaning that we can't get it outside of the radical, that we have to have a way to get it out of the denominator. So to do that, what we do is we multiply the radical by the same expression that's in the denominator, meaning whatever it happens to be, we're going to multiply by that exact term or exact, exact expression. Um, again, another way to say that, it's you're going to multiply by usually itself. What are we doing? Well, it has to be a form of one. Okay, so remember that m rationalizing means that we're multiplying by a form of itself. Um, let's change that into words that maybe we're a little bit more familiar with, which is that we're going to multiply by a form of 1, again, not changing the expression, and that's essential here. We're not changing anything. We're just changing the way that it looks by multiplying by a form of 1 that helps us out. So let's see this rationalization in action. So here we have example A, which has a radical in the bottom where the radicand, again, the number underneath the radical, isn't does not have another perfect square term. Five is a prime, so we can't do anything with that. Here's how we address it. We're gonna go ahead and multiply by a form of one or square root of five over the square root of five. Again, the exact same value that's in the denominator. It's gonna allow us to, if you're looking at it, when I multiply those two fives, it's gonna become five squared. Now it can come outside of the radical. That's the whole point of rationalization. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna take the numerator, multiply it by the square root of five, and the denominator is gonna be multiplied by the square root of five, which is really gonna be five squared. That's kind of the point. That should kind of happen each and every time that you do this, is that whatever's in the denominator, the radicand will be the squared version of itself so that it can come outside the radical. Now let's move down here and finish this problem off. 2 to the square root of 5, that's done. We can't simplify that anymore. So let's look at the denominator now, however. Oops, let's go ahead and realize that this is the inverse, right? So the square root and the square are going to be inverses, so a 5 is going to come out. So I'm left with the 5 in the denominator, and now I look at that, and there's nothing left to do, and so I end up with the exact value of 2 times the square root of 5 divided by 5. Well, let's try that again, but this time let's do it with a variable. So looking at b here, you'll notice that we have a radical in the numerator and a denominator, but really we're only concerned with the fact that 8 isn't a perfect squared term. So even if though I can see that it's 4 and 2, and 2 and the 4 could be 2 squared, which would come out, but the n can't and then there's a two that can't. So I could simplify it and rationalize by a different value, but we might as well just start it here. Um, in this case, it, it could go two ways, but this way is just as good. So we're gonna multiply again by a form of one. The square root of eight over n over square root of eight over n. Okay, or times n. So now we've got, this is rationalization. We're gonna go ahead and multiply this out. So if I multiply the two numerators, I'm gonna get under one radical again, Showing my steps here, I'm going to take 8 times 7 times n. That's essentially what I'm going to get, right, when I multiply that portion. Um, in the denominator, I'm going to get the exact terms that I'm looking for. 8 squared times n squared. Exactly what I wanted. All right, so let's move down here and see if we can simplify. Well, first, let's get rid of our radicals in the denominator. So that radical is going to cancel with that. And the radical, again, is also going to cancel with that square there. So 8 and n are going to come out in the denominator. Then we can start to look at the numerator to see if we can clean it up. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. 8, then, is going to break up. So let's break it up so that we can start to reduce it. It's going to turn into 4 um, times 2 times 7 times n. All right, in the denominator, I'm going to be left with an 8 and an n exactly what I want. Now there's no more radical in the denominator. So let's clean this up a little bit more, again showing all of my steps. So I'm going to get 2 squared times 2 times 7, which is going to make 14 times n. Okay. Um, again, let's put it back over our 8n. Um, let's see if we got some more room down here. So equals, let's go ahead and clean out this radical now. The, two in, or the square root and that square are going to cancel out, moving the 2 outside. And then I'm going to be left with the square root of 14n over 8n. 
And I can pause there. I'm going to double check my radical. 14, while it's divisible by 2, is not a perfect squared term. And n is definitely not a perfect squared term as well. So the radical is cleaned up. However, looking closely at this, this is all under multiplication, meaning that this 2 and that 8 are reducible. So I'm going to reduce those two. And I should end up with just the numerator because the 2 is going to divide itself out. We're going to divide both evenly by 2. It's going to leave a 14n. A rat, uh, the square root of 14n in the numerator and just a 4 left over times n in the denominator. And that's going to be the simplest form that I can put this in. Okay, so then the simplest form, now that we have all our rules, for a radical or any t expression with a radical in it would be true if all of these th three statements are true. Meaning first, that the radicand, again, the value underneath the radical, right, has no perfect squared terms, we'll say, um, other than one, meaning that it's basically a prime number. Um, two, the radicand has no fractions, meaning that we've cleaned the fractions out and split them. We saw that in the previous notes. And then finally, the denominator um, has no fraction or no radical due to rationalization, um, which we saw in this particular video. So now you should be pretty good on how to clean up and clear out expressions with radicals. We'll see you in class.